All right, welcome everybody. I hope you enjoyed the uh, last lecture. I uh, wanted to do something a little bit different that time. I wasn't sure that um, it would be well received, but um, I don't know. If you can't troll your students every once in a while, what's the point of being a professor? You know what I mean? So um, let's go over the quiz results, I guess, and uh, see how you did. We do have a guest speaker coming in today. Uh, I don't. Oh, she is here. Okay. So, uh, hey, guys. hey, Stephanie, how you doing? Um, let me go over the quiz real fast, then I'll turn it over to you. Is that okay, Steph? That's perfect. Cool. Two factor authentication. There we So we learned three fallacies, um, which I taught using a meta argument. A meta argument is in, it's when, um, like a meta story is when a story is about the story itself. For example, um, you're reading the novel and then the author starts talking about how hard it is to write the novel, you know, that's meta. Uh, nowadays meta oftentimes means like, um, which video game characters are the best or whatever, but let's see, quiz statistics. Yeah, what I did what I did last time was called a meta lecture. Ah, look at that. One of the best uh, results ever. Okay. So, yeah, the, uh, the first uh, fallacy I went over last time, yeah, that was, that was actually really good. Maybe I should just limit all of my lectures to a minute and a half. <laughs> Did you actually have a dentist appointment or were you trolling us? I had a, I had a dentist appointment, yeah. yeah. Actually, I didn't. I showed up there and they're like, you, you don't actually have an appointment today. I was like, oh. Why do I have it on my phone? They're like, we can't tell you that. I don't know. So, yeah. But uh, I had already uh, notified people that I had had a dentist appointment and there wouldn't be any lecture that day. So I was like, well, I can't uncancel it at this point. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So the first, uh, the first fallacy that I went over was a really broad fallacy. Actually, a non sequitur is anytime the logic doesn't work really. And so, um, it doesn't apply to things like equivocation and things like that because with equivocation, the logic works, but um, the words are used in a different sense. So, um, it, the, the, the argument's wrong, right? You know, uh, last time I was equivocating between Justin Bieber and Joe Biden. So, uh, where's your Disneyland trip on? No, that, that was totally a lie. So, <laughs> okay. Um, but in, Usually in this class, when I refer to a non sequitur, it's when the conclusion just bears no relationship to the uh, antecedent, you know? So in this case, there's no connection at all between having a dentist appointment and uh, talking about fallacies, you know what I mean? Like, there's just, like, but there's, what? No. Um, so that's non sequitur. Uh... The other ones aren't even close. So when I say that this lecture is one of the best I've ever given, if I do say so myself, this is some, something called Ipsy Dixit, which is, um, I don't know, it's also the name of a board game called Dixit, if you ever played that one. And um, Ipsy Dixit is one of the worst fallacies, simply because um, it's just like, believe me, this is true. So for example... Douglas accused Lincoln in the Douglas-Lincoln debates of being part of a conspiracy to nationalize slavery. And at least according to Wikipedia. Right. And it actually kind of re reminds me a little bit of the uh, conspiracy thinking that we have going on today, 
right? Because there's like there's no evidence for that, you know. And I, I don't think, um, you know, Lincoln denied it, you know. And Lincoln's response was, "Look, I, I you know, you, you can't just like believe somebody that I'm part of a conspiracy when I'm not just on this say so." Like he just said, "I, I'm, I." I'm just going to allege that Lincoln is part of a conspiracy to take all of our slaves away. And, um, and it's worse than appeal to a popularity. It's worse than appeal to authority. Because at least in that case, you're giving some sort of justification. Right? Like, at least in that case, you're saying, look, a hundred people all uh, agree that Lincoln's part of a conspiracy. You know, and maybe, maybe if there's enough people that all agree, like, you know, like there's something to it, you know what I mean? Maybe, um, maybe they know something I don't, you know what I mean? And appeal to authority can sometimes even work, you know, like, um, you know, the FBI, you know, investigated Lincoln and found that he was part of a conspiracy. Like that's, you know, actually maybe a legitimate move, you know, but uh, a bare assertion sometimes called a naked assertion, depending on how fresh you want to be, is just the worst. It's just, you just make a claim, like, you know, there's microchips and vaccines. No supporting evidence whatsoever. You know, it's, it's like literally the worst kind of argument you can make. Like, I just say so. Or trust me. Or, um, what's another way of putting it? Um, you know, even if you say something like everybody knows, like that would be ad populum, you know? Um, but it's quite common. Like people will just assert something, you know, my grandfather built the highway through Zion national park. Let's move on. You know, like, you know, it, and you know, I'm your professor. So maybe you believe me that my grandfather did build the, uh, tunnel leading to Zion national park. And maybe he did. You guys know where Zion is? What state? Anyone been to Zion? Uh, yeah. So I could be wrong about that, by the way. But I, I actually do believe my grandfather told me that. My dad hadn't heard that, though. So, I don't know. Could be misremembering. Yeah. But I, I, I do seem to recall... He didn't He didn't build it in terms of, like, he was the only dude. But uh, during... Uh, during... Uh, you know, his younger years, I think he worked on the, the team that built the the tunnel through it. But at this point, he's dead. There's really no way of verifying it. I I remember him telling me that. My dad doesn't remember his father talking about it. So there you go. You know, I, I can't give you any more. I can't give you any more evidence than that, you know. So you found out because of 23 and Me. Yeah, there's DNA on the, on the tunnel. <laughs> I hope not. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> uh, when I said that if you had any questions, just go look it up on Wikipedia, and that hurt my soul a little bit, because I'm, I'm very firmly a professor that doesn't believe in, like, just brushing off students, you know, like, I, I wanted to say, you know, if you have any questions about it, ask me, you know, send me a message on Discord, you know, post on the Help Center, it, it, it kind of, like, hurt my soul a little bit, I'm like, I, I think I've covered this pretty well, you know. Uh, if you have any questions, just go look it up on Wikipedia. And, and I literally wave my hand, you know, for you guys. So, uh, yeah. Uh, hand waving is when you provide a v support for your, for your claim. Like you make some sort of claim and then you provide a sort of very vague and unhelpful evidence for it. Uh, if you want to go find out why you're wrong, go, go read Wikipedia. You know, or in math, have you guys ever had your math instructor say, I leave, I leave the rest of this proof as an exercise for the reader, <laughs> right? It's true, uh, but I'm not going to prove it to you. Um, you can, you can, um, you're almost got hit by a mattress. Wow. It's crazy. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I almost got hit by a, a churro machine once. That was that was exciting. Uh, on the freeway, yeah. Um, yeah, so hand waving is when um, look if if you don't understand what I'm talking about, 
Just read this book here. Okay. I'll explain in there. Can you explain it to me? No. You have to read the book. The whole book. All thousand pages. It's in there somewhere. Trust me. You know? And so trust me sounds like Ipsy Dixit, bare assertion, but hand waving at least you're giving some sort of like unhelpful support for your argument. Okay. So that is the yeah, there was a there was a dude driving down the, the 41 and uh, the churro machine was on the back of the flatbed of his truck and the window wasn't locked down and so as I'm driving behind him the window opens up and the uh, little pots and pans and things like that on the inside start coming down the freeway at me and I'm playing Frogger you know on the freeway dodging you know the tongs and the bowls and all this stuff coming out yeah, that was exciting. That'll wake you up real real fast in the morning. Um, make a video game out of that. You know. Dodge the dodge the churro machine. Okay. Yeah. Once I ran over nails, and I know that there are nails because there was a box on the road that just said nails on it, like it was in some sort of Wiley e. Coyote cartoon. It just said nails. It was a box that nails, and I, <laughs> it was, you know. I couldn't dodge, and I just went right over it, and uh, ended up, um, yeah, getting a nail in my tire. Believe it or not, it was in the Looney Tunes. It literally felt like that. It was just a box. It just said nails on it, like just a. <laughs> I have no logo or anything. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I used to drive. I used to drive a lot, and um, now you don't know if he's telling the truth. Yeah, that that's too. Uh, it would be lame if I made that story up. That's actually a true story. That was in Grossmont uh, in San Diego that I ran over the nails. And the churro machine was here on the, the 41. Okay. So, uh, Steph, you ready to... Uh, you ready to go? Squirrels are dumb. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't trust... I don't trust squirrels either. Because they have some sort of magical ability to leap out in front of your car. Okay. Take it away, Stephanie Motzenbach. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Tudor over in the Learning Center. Um, I just came to talk to you guys today about the Learning Center and, like, the fact that, like, we exist. Um, especially because since so many classes are virtual, it's, it, you don't see the building, so it's hard to know that we exist, um, which is fair. So I know that this is uh, CSI 1. Um, I can't remember. Kearney, is there a writing component in this class or not really? There is, yeah. There's there's okay. a capstone essay that's coming up for them. Well, there we go. I didn't know that, so this is actually quite convenient. Um, um, if you guys need help with the essay or any writing for any class, um, the Writing Center does exist. Or, there is a Writing Center, but there's also a Learning Center. Um, and you can use both. We're not in competition. But there are resources on campus that you can make appointments for. Um, if you take computer science classes down the road, we have tutors for that. We have math tutors. Um, I also do tutor math, and we have communication tutors, history tutors, etc. Um, so I'm just going to drop a link in the chat. I can't see. You go over here and copy and paste this real quick. Um, let's see. I just have this link up, too. Okay, sorry. Give me just a second. I got to pull this back up again. Um, so this is kind of the go-to thing to see if a tutor is on or not. Uh, there we go. Um, so this is kind of what you'd use. So like right now, um, you can click on that and you can see who's on, who's not, what day they're on, what day they're not. Um, and you can schedule an in-person appointment or you can schedule an online appointment. So for example, if you look at my schedule, my schedule is, uh, let's see, today's Friday. So today, today I'm online. Um, but Thursday I'm in person. Um, so there is that available and you can make the appointment online. Um, I'm not 100% how it looks on your guys' end. Um, but let me see if I can show you how it looks on my end. Uh, let's see, I have way too many tabs open. Um, Do you want to share your screen? Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm just going to show you the whole thing. Are you guys able to see my screen? Because I don't do this very often. I, I see you seeing the channel. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, yeah. okay, so let me exit on that. So this is more or less how it would look if you go over to this link, for example. And I let's say I want to make an appointment with Emily. I would just click over here, click over there, and now I'm already signed into this, but you would sign into this website using the same login for your email or Canvas. And um, so like right now it says there's no availability. So I'll just click, I'll schedule an option. I'll type in what I want to do. So I want to do tutoring and I'll select math and then I'll pick like, I don't know what day she works actually. I don't know what the call Wednesday. And so at this point, okay, so I guess she doesn't work that day, but Will works that day. If you guys wanted to make a writing appointment, um, you don't have to make it with me. I would love to see your faces, um, but we do have other writing tutors available. Um, so then you just do writing. I think I'm booked for today, so we do Monday. Um, okay, so yeah, there's my face, there's the other people, and so you can select, like, Say you go to a writing tutor and you're like, man, that person was really helpful. I want to go, you know, make an appointment with Ernie. Um, and then you just select your time and you get an email and then you you see that person at that day and time. Um, any questions about this? Let's stop sharing. Oops. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, so yeah, feel free to stop on by. Oh, you can also go in person if you want and make online appointments. Um, the Learning Center is located in the library and the, oh, we're in the basement, which just feels wrong. Um, but it's actually a really nice basement, so there's that. <laughs> um, you just go down the stairs and, uh, um, I'm trying to think. You make a right and we're behind this wall. It's not very obvious. There should really be a giant signage that says Learning Center here. Um, so yeah, we should really offer free candy. Good thing, like, there's adults here because if they, that'd be really sketchy if this was like a children's school and be like, hey, free candy, come here. Um, so yeah, you can come and make an appointment there. We also, if you're any, in any classes with SI, SI is there, that's supplemental instruction, and then there's also a support net. So if you guys are ever like going through anything, um, there's the counseling center on campus, support networks to help connect you with other services. So if you need help getting a job, if you know there's a food shortage in your family, you need to connect to the food bank. Um, SupportNet is kind of like that central hub to get you connected to everywhere. And so they're also located in the basement behind that wall. Um, so yeah, do you guys have any questions before I head out? What is the uh, food bank? Um, so the food bank, I've never actually used it. I, I almost used it one semester because I was like, I'm poor and I'm a college student. Um, the food bank is basically a free resource for students on campus. Um, let me see if I can try and locate where that is on campus. Um, uh, but yeah, it's free. People donate their food to it, and you just show up and you just show them your student ID. You don't have to say, "Hey, I'm like, you know, I need food or anything." You can just be like, "Hey, you know, I'm a student here. I'd like to get some food." And just like no questions asked, they'll let you get a bag of food and you're good to go. And you can come back. I don't think there's a real limit. Like obviously don't unload the whole food bank into your car, um, <laughs> but you can, I think it's pretty frequent that you can come back. It's like no questions asked. Um, let me see if I can get the link to this. Uh, I think it's technically called like the student cupboard. And I think this would be a good link for you guys. Yeah, um, I didn't know that the, the uh, food bank existed, so that's actually really, uh, really good information. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I mean, for any of you guys, if you ever have a question, feel free to message me on Discord. Um, I have been a student here for seven years, um, so I know a lot of the ins and outs of random little things. Um, so if you guys ever have any questions about anything, there's study rooms in the library. There's group study rooms um, with whiteboards and everything. There's individual study rooms. Um, there's the SSD office. Well, actually, let me run back to study rooms. 
For the study rooms, if you want to book a study room, go to the Henry Madden Library and website. Let me see if I can pull it up. Um, let's see. Library booking system. So you can just select where you want to book it for. You will need to use your Fresno State ID um, to book this. Um, well, your Fresno State email is it, I should say, but that is available if you ever want to meet up with someone on campus to study. Um, there's the SSD office where if you have any sort of learning disability or physical disability or any kind, it could be anxiety, depression, you know, um, and as long as it's like a certified disability, then the SSD office on campus can help you get you certified with a note taker or something. Um, there's different librarian services to where like on the Henry Madden Library, if you're writing a paper and you're stuck, you can message a librarian and you can just chat with them on the website. Um, so there's a lot of resources on campus. And if you're ever like, hey, I'm stuck, there's probably a resource for it. Um, so again, if you guys have any questions, just feel free to message me. But that is all I had for today. Um, Kareem, was, did you have any other questions or no? Uh, uh, where, what, what building is the learning center in? Did you say that? Well, yeah, the learning center is in the library um, gotcha. on the basement. So you can either get there through the elevator or through the stairs. Um, but either way, once you get out of the stairs, the wall will be on one side of like the building. And then on the other side, there's just going to be this other wall with books and you have to go behind that one. So it's not very obvious, unfortunately, okay. but if you walk around the giant wall to your right, it'll be there. Gotcha. So you walk into the library, walk downstairs, wander around and you'll find the learning center. Pretty much. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So no one can hear you scream. <laughs> uh, it's very quiet down there actually so uh, if you were if anything was to happen i think the whole library would hear it <laughs> awesome thank you so much steph for uh sharing this with us and uh, uh yeah steph is is uh, was a former student of mine and she's uh, uh doing or is your major data science or is that just like your emphasis or it really should be called data science. Um, my major is math with an option in stats. Mm. Um, Fresno State doesn't really have a data science major. They have a, a business major with an um, an option in data science. But with that one, you take like one programming class and one economics class, and then they just kind of put that stamp on it. Um, but yeah, mine's basically a data science major. There's a lot of um, coding classes and math classes and like data storage classes and whatnot so yeah cool are you are you enjoying it would you recommend it to the other students here oh yeah i i love it if you love stats or anything like that um i definitely recommend it um i was told like if you're not a math person you'll love stats or if you love stats you're not a math person and i have not had that experience and i've not seen anyone have that experience um <laughs> so it's it's very fascinating it's a good mix of coding and math but it's like it's coding meant for math people so it feels less intimidating um and we get to work on a lot of real world problems like analyzing covid data or analyzing uh different like the titanic data set on like proving you know hey are you more likely to live if you're a woman and young on the titanic and i was like yep you know it's true um so just working with different probabilities my current teacher loves working with gambling probabilities. So he's like, use this knowledge for good and go make money. Um, <laughs> so it can be really fun, especially if you enjoy something like that. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, she, uh, is it okay if I link your, your talk from last semester to these guys? Go for it. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's an unlisted uh, video on YouTube. So awesome. Cool. Thank you so much, Steph. Yeah, you're welcome. In that video, I kept forgetting that I was being recorded, so I had to like rewatch. I was like, "Wait, did I say anything dumb?" Uh, but yeah, no, for it. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I don't think you did. Um, and uh, a lot of students actually messaged me afterwards saying that was one of their their favorite things, which uh, nice. that makes you know, me really happy. And inspired. And I, I know at least two students like either changed their major or were thinking about changing their major because of your talk. So. Yeah. It is awesome getting more people to data science. Like, I think I heard that that was one of the uh, fastest growing fields out there. It, oh, literally it's... every single place needs a data science person. So it's so hot right now. Uh, oh, come on, where is the Zoolander meme? Okay. Oh my god. 
There you go. Except data science. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you, Steph. Yeah. Bye, guys. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Yeah. She's she's awesome. So, uh, I'll I'll pull up her her lecture on data science from last uh, semester, and I'll I'll put it up here. I just created a new uh, what is this called module on Zybooks, and I put the link to the learning center that she posted on there on there. Uh, the class lectures playlist is there, so you can watch all of them start to finish. <laughs> Before you go into finals week, just rewatch the entire class. And uh, the uh, link to the food cupboard, because uh, um, when I was in college, I was poor too. Um, um, and uh, yeah, it, it sucks being poor and hungry and I had a job too I had a job that would pay me as many hours as I wanted to do absolutely nothing and I, I couldn't do it it was too boring I, I was paid to come in and stare at a wall 15 bucks an hour which nowadays would probably be like I don't know 20 or something Yeah, so I was being paid 25 bucks an hour to stare at a concrete wall. That was exciting. <sighs> okay. Yeah, it sounds wonderful, right? Like, you don't have to do anything. You just sit there. You can read a book, you know. Um, I tried playing video games. They got mad at me for playing video games. It's like, I mean, you're not paying me to do anything anyway. I mean, why not let me play video games? It looks bad. Okay. So I, I, it sounds wonderful. And then after about two hours of sitting in a room with nothing to do, like it gets tiring really fast. Like you're just like, I just want to go home. You know, and I was starving. You know, I was literally starving. I couldn't bring myself to do it. Okay. Uh, the purpose of the job was a programming job. And I had completed all the programming. So I couldn't do anything else until the rest of the team had finished their part of the project. And I was like, I'll leave. And they're like, no, no, we'll pay you to stay. I'm like, I don't have anything to do. I've, I've got my stuff done. They're like, yeah, but we'll have more for you in the future. So we're just going to pay you to just, just come in and just sit in the, put, put your butt in the chair and we'll just pay you. And that sounded wonderful. And it was for about an hour. Then after that, I was just like, oh, <laughs> like I'm just sitting there like, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry right now. Uh, so, no, it was in. A, it couldn't listen to music. Couldn't play video games. It, I, I did that for a while, and that was great. I mean, they were paying me to play video. Like, no, 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 it looks bad. You can't. You can't play video games. Yeah, I could. I could eat there, I guess. Yeah. And I'd pop in and like do an hour, and then just be like, after an hour of staring at a wall, like, like it's it's surprisingly difficult to. It, it sounds like the ideal job. Okay, so uh, we've got a lot of fallacies in this class. And so last time we went over three of them. Uh, I've got a cheat sheet. Uh, it's on It's on Canvas. Trust me on this. <laughs> You're hand-waving. It's on Canvas somewhere. Trust me. Ipsy Dixit. Um, but it, it actually is. Um, <laughs> uh, that has a list of all the fallacies. Uh, you don't need to read that just yet. You'll need to read it before the next midterm because I love fallacies. There's a lot of them. If you go to Wikipedia, there's like 200 fallacies. We're not going to do 200 fallacies in this class. We're going to do mm, maybe about 20. That's still a lot, though. That's still a lot. Okay, so uh, we talked a little bit last time about fallacies and cognitive biases. A fallacy is when the argument doesn't work. A cognitive bias oftentimes sort of underlies a fallacy. It's, it's sort of the... Um, a shortcut our brain takes because our, our brain takes all sorts of shortcuts like if you've ever studied cognitive science like you know what I'm talking about like there's so many like um, if, a, if a, a brighter area or a darker area grows in size 
your brain interprets that as something flying at you. You know, it could just be like you're watching a movie of like something going through a tunnel or something like that. But um, if something flies at your face really fast, you don't have time to sit there and think about it. Like you'll go Whoop, like this, you know. Um, and so a lot of times they're they're useful. If somebody throws a dodgeball at you, you know, you need to be able to get out of the way, you know, or, or you get hit in the face. And you sit there like, is that a dodgeball? You know, so some shortcuts are okay, but a lot of shortcuts, mm, they cause us not to be in alignment with reality. And so, for example, the, the ad populum fallacy, the, the cognitive bias underlying that is social proof. Um, I don't know if I have the book right here. No, it's not here. Um, but there, there's various kind of shortcuts our brains take when it comes to these things, and social proof is one of them. For example, the, the F-150 being a popular truck, right? Because you might not be a truck person, but you figure, hey, if truck people are buying the Ford F-150, it must be a good truck, or at least it must not be horrible, right? Because if something's horrible, people wouldn't keep buying it year after year, right? And there, there's probably, you know, there's probably a certain amount of, you know, reason behind, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if, if, if you see everybody in your tribe eating a banana, you're like, okay, I've never seen this banana thing before, but it's probably safe. I mean, they're eating it. Like, why would they eat something that was poisonous, you know? And so a lot of these things have like kind of a good reason for them, but uh, politicians and advertisers will exploit them, right? Um, and so on advertising, they, they will be like, this is the most popular fries in America. Yeah, look, McDonald's, your fries suck. The reason why they're the most popular fries in America is because just people eat at McDonald's. They don't, you know, we're not going there for the fries. You know, we're going there because it's, it's cheap, you know, <laughs> it's like, come on. So, uh, another midterm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you're asking about the essay. There is, there is a capstone essay. So that'll be like week, uh, like a week or so before finals or two weeks before finals, you're going to get your capstone essay and you're gonna have to write it on fallacies. So pay attention. Um, yeah. So ad populum, there's like a social proof cognitive bias that underlies it. Um, ad vericundium, appeal to authority, there is a certain amount of, um, in the human brain, like if there's an authority that you like and respect, like you'll tend to believe them, you know, so again, there's good reasons from an evolutionary standpoint, if you're into evolution, uh, why, you know, that would be the case, right? Yeah. And elders like, don't eat the deadly nightshade, it'll kill you, you know? And if you go, well, screw you, elder, and you eat it, you die, all right? So, um... You know, they could be wrong, you know, and history has shown that old people can be wrong all the time. That's a thing. But there's oftentimes, like, good underlying reasons. They're like heuristics. Like, they, they work they work some of the time, you know. So sometimes cognitive biases are useful, sometimes they're not. Okay. So, uh, distorted distorted thinking, when, you're, when your thoughts don't line up with reality, that's usually a bad sign. And if it gets bad enough, then the... The Phantom Thieves have to get called in to clean up your mess. Okay, so we've talked about ad populum, ad vericundium, equivocation. All right, so uh, like the Breaking Bad gifts. Uh, I have not seen Breaking Bad. It, it doesn't seem like uh, it seems like kind of a depressing show. So I don't know. I I I, I know it's good. It's just um, yeah, there's some shows that like are just like Dexter, like I, I, I don't know if you guys have seen Dexter's coming back. Like it's just a show that just depresses me, and so I'm just like, uh, yeah, it's what it's a good show, but I just I just don't watch it. You know? Can I learn how to make meth? <laughs> okay. So okay, so let's talk about some new fallacies: fallacy of composition and fallacy of division. And these are. Uh, the same fallacy, just in the different direction. Okay, so what it is, is when you reason from the parts to the whole, that's a fallacy of composition. For example, all of the parts of my, um, all the parts of my computer here are cheap, therefore my computer as a whole is cheap. You know? Uh, my car has tires, therefore my car is tires. Um, 90... 
nine percent of a roller coaster is hostile to human life therefore roller coasters are hostile to human life right when you reason from the parts of the whole sometimes it's it's valid like if all of the parts of my computer conducted electricity then the whole would conduct electricity because that's how electricity works but a lot of the time um the, the the reason you just doesn't work for example a very common argument you'll actually see people make in in um, uh, certain circles at least is the notion that humans don't have souls because like you know humans are just atoms you know where is the soul you know it's just, we're just if you look at us under a microscope you just see a bunch of you know cells with golgi bodies and you know messenger rna and you know that kind of stuff you don't see there's no soul you know you just look you look at the lowest level there's carbon and you know if you go even lower you got quarks and stuff like that in there i don't see a soul therefore you know if, if humans are made of atoms and um then we're nothing but atoms there's no room for a soul so what if carney a twitch streamer um I, I dislike Twitch with a passion, in part because, in part because their their email recovery system doesn't work with Hotmail, which uh, I created as a spam collecting email back in the '90s, and um, so when I register on websites, I use my Hotmail address, and their Twitch just won't send a reset pass. You know, like you forgot your password, you can click on it. It just doesn't work with Hotmail. So I contacted their tech support. I'm like, yo, my password reset isn't coming in. They're like, sucks to be you. Like, like literally, I, like, I'm not joking. Like, they were just rude about it. They're like, sorry. And I'm like, can you reset it for me? They're like, nope, go away. Bye-bye. Like, that was the attitude of Twitch support. And I was like, cool. And it, it wouldn't have bothered me because, like, it's, you know, I'm, it's, who cares? But Wizards of the Coast... The people who make Dungeons and Dragons switched to using Twitch for their login system. So all of a sudden, I'm trying to log in to access, you know, my ninth level Cobalt Sorcerer, and it requires me to log in using Twitch. I'm like, what world is this? Why? Why? Huh? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? This is the stupidest thing ever. And so I, I, I dislike Twitch for that reason. You yeah. know. Okay. Um. Yeah, but I am I am a professional streamer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Be sure to like and subscribe and pound that notification button. Okay. So, um, fallacy of composition doesn't come up that often, but it's uh, uh, the most common time that I see it used is when it's part of like a false generalization. Because it is, it is. We've we'll talk about false generalization more, but like, um, if you say that, uh, you know, Republican, you know, uh, the republic people in the Republican Party are opposed to vaccines. Therefore, the Republican Party is opposed to vaccines. That'd be a fallacy of composition, right? What is true of the part must be true of the whole. That's fallacy of composition, and the reality of the situation is the people in the party tend to be more like Lindsey Graham, a Senate Republican Senator was like, Hey, I'm just saying if, if, if it's, if you think it's good for your health, you should get a vaccine and people start booing him. You know, he's like, I'm not telling you to get it. I'm just saying like, if it's good for you, you should get a vaccine. And, and they're like, Boo! you know? And so there's, you know, there's a, a I, I think a disconnect between the people in the party in that case. So, um, Yeah, and and so sometimes the fall the fallacy actually works. Like for you know, if it conducts electricity, if I build a ladder and every piece of the ladder conducts electricity and, and it's all connected together, then the whole thing should conduct electricity, right? Or, you know, maybe the resistance goes up the bigger it gets or something. But yeah, uh, if all things in the universe have a sufficient reason for their existence, then. Um, among Us. Yeah, I've, I've played I've played Among Us with my students before. What happens is that students just vote out the professor. <laughs> what do you mean it's me? 
Put him out. Out the airlock. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that was so popular like six months ago, and like just I don't see him even playing anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's probably a good idea to play anonymous. Okay. Yeah, so if, if all things in the universe have a sufficient reason for their existence, it's called the PSR, the principle of sufficient reason by Leibniz. Then it's uh, arguably reasonable to say the universe itself has a sufficient reason for its existence, right? It's, you know, it's a transitive property, arguably. Fall guys, yeah, fall guys as well. Didn't, didn't make it to fall though. So only way to play a fallacy is yeah. Um, let's see. I picked on Republicans. So I need to pick on Democrats too. So um, okay, let's do let's do fallacy division with Democrats. So fallacy division is the other way. So what is true of the whole? must be true of the part. So for example, the Democrat party supports gun control, right? You're a Democrat, therefore you must support gun control. Well, not necessarily, right? Like, especially here in Fresno, there's quite a lot of Democrats that, you know, uh, that like their guns, you know what I mean? So, so the, uh, do, do you guys see what I'm, do you see the difference here? So for the fallacy of composition, you've got like five objects you put them into a group and they argue, you argue that what's true of the five things must be true of the group. And for a fallacy of division, you have a group and you say what's true of the group must be true of the parts. Um, uh, these are forms of false generalization fallacies. Uh, what's another example? Um, uh, a gumball machine takes coins to dispense gumballs, right? Therefore, the gumballs, which are part of the gumball machine, must take coins. No. Like, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you can have a system, you know, like if you have pipes filled with water in your house, that doesn't mean that if I have a pipe in my hand here, it'll have water in it. Does that make sense? So, you have a bunch of objects, you put them into a group. You can't necessarily say what is true for the individual things or true of the group. That's fallacy of composition. Fallacy of division is the other way. What's true of the group? Because a lot of times when you assemble things together, um, it takes on, um, you know, the, the sum is greater than the, you know, the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Like, individually, each of the pieces of my computers doesn't do anything, right? But when you put them all together and power it, which requires a power supply, then it's then it does more than if I just had this whole thing disassembled here. Okay. Uh, group Among Us game? Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, no. Sorry. I'm going camping tonight. Uh, hit me up next week. We can, we can do it. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be uh, camping with a um, uh, thousand people or so uh, for the next couple days. So don't, don't ask questions on Discord. I'm not going to be there. All right. Finally, last one for today. Circular logic. Professor Assess. Uh, I'm going to go to Great Western War. It's a, a medieval reenactment event. Normally I put on my armor and hit people with sticks and stuff like that. Uh, we do full contact fighting and armor with rattan weaponry. So you're cracking people with broom handles, essentially. And uh, I'm not fighting this year, though, because of the, the pandemic. It seems like a bad idea to be in a group of hundreds of people all fighting close quarters. So... Um, it is fun. It's it's very fun. Yeah, you come out of it with bruises and stuff, dude. You're you're getting hit with broom handles, essentially. Um, but I'm going to be going to like classes on. Um, I'm going to be taking a class on me medieval board games. Uh, usually, I take music classes. I'm going to be singing sea shanties tomorrow night. So, I bought some Fort Gay rum, and uh, we're going to make some rum punch and do sea shanties, and yeah, it's pretty fun. So. Uh, yeah, yeah if, you, if you ever picked up a stick as a kid and hit people with it, it's pretty much the thing. My daughter does it too. So she has she has a set of armor and she hits people with sticks and stuff. It's fun. This is fun. Okay, so circular logic, last one for today. Um, so circular logic is when you say premise one x, conclusion x. <laughs> That's the form of circular logic, right? Uh, premise one, X is true. Premise two, Y is true. Conclusion, X is true. Okay. You know, 
it's like you, you didn't you didn't do anything with your argument. You know what I mean? It's like you know you're just you're just proving that if what you assumed was true, then it's true. But you can dress it up so that it looks like a real argument, right? For example, uh, an atheist might say, God is not real. I know this to be true. Premise. God, God's not real. Therefore, all evidence in the Bible is wrong, right? Because if, if God's not real, then all the claims of support from the Bible are wrong, right? They must be. Because X implies Y, not Y, therefore not X. Modus tollens. Therefore, there is no evidence for God. And since we should not believe things without evidence, we can conclude God is not real. And so there you go. Checkmate theists, right? So, uh, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's basically a circular reasoning argument, right? So, um, yeah, but when you break it down, you just realize they just assumed something to be true and they just proved that something was true because they assumed it to be true, which doesn't do anything. It's a worthless argument. Yeah. I know aliens are real because I had an encounter, and that encounter could only be explained by aliens. That's That dresses it up a little bit more, makes it a little harder to, to see what's going on. But I had an encounter, you know, there's a bright light outside of my window. Premise one. Premise two, the only explanation for that bright light was aliens. Conclusion, it was aliens. Well, premise two was the conclusion, you know. So, okay. Can't have my brightness up. I'll have a chat open. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's it for today. So we went we went over three fallacies today, and uh, but I'm uh, I'm happy uh, Steph came in. She's she's actually a really smart person. So um, knows knows her math and data science better than me by far. Um, so go uh, get help. It's surprising she's teaching writing, but. You know, she's a smart person, so yeah. There, there is going to be a capstone essay. It's for your GE requirement for this class. It's not, it's not that bad. I think it's like two pages or something. Some, don't quote me on that. I'd, I'd have to look it up, but it's somewhere around the order of two pages or so. And uh, it's like a thousand, thousand words or something. Let me, let me see if I can. I don't, don't trust me on that. I'll, I'll pull it up for you real fast. Um, <laughs> Capstone GES, eh? Uh, yeah, a thousand words. Okay, four pages. Okay, there you go. It's a thousand words, four pages, really? It's not very many words, honestly. How many pages is a thousand words? Two to four pages, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. So, I guess it depends if you single space or double space. Okay. We do this for every GE class. Yeah, so the GE classes, uh, they go they go into your GE portfolio, and you um, submit them to the GE coordinator on Fresno State. And so, we'll, we'll get to that later in the semester. But you were, you were all asking about it. So, it's, it's basically a two to four page essay on fallacies. And what you do is you write it, you submit it on, we do a discussion on um, Canvas like we've done for uh, two of the things so far. And then uh, you mail it to the GE coordinator and it goes into your portfolio. So you, you finish Fresno State with like a portfolio of like showing you've done all the different GE subjects and things like that, from what I understand. I actually only teach here part-time, so I actually don't know the Fresno State system as well as at my college at Clovis. So, um, okay, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you. And uh, we will pick it up again on Monday, assuming I survive the sword fighting. <laughs> Why are college students so unmotivated? <laughs> All right, see y'all. Is it a holiday? Is Monday a holiday? Do you guys have off Monday? Do you have school on Monday? I don't know. I'll have to look that one up. All right. See you guys.